What's going on everybody? I'm back with another video. This video is going to be looking at Jesse Marsh's leads after he's been taking over from Marcelo Bielsa. Now before we get into the tactics that he'll bring to Leeds United, check out both my books. They're online on Amazon and there's links in the description below. Also, just want to be clear, if I were in charge of the decision making at Leeds, I would not have fired Marcelo Bielsa. I would have given him the last 12 games just because I do believe he would have kept them up in the Premier League seeing their last 12 games looks like they're going to need about four wins or so to stay in the Premier League and I think he would have got that because his teams do create chances and although they've struggled defensively hopefully the big players like Bamford, Phillips and Cooper will come back for the most important part of the season and I do think that he would get the best out of his players create the chances they need to score goals and win games. Now switching to Jesse Marsh is a big gamble in my opinion because just with 12 games left he doesn't have much time to work with the team before they just get into the most important fixtures of of the year and having the players adapt from one tactical setup to another might take a little bit of time and results may suffer because of the time that it takes and then the time that's available in the learning curve that will happen but anyway i hope leeds united stay in the league because I really like them as a club and their fan base is awesome. So let's get into the tactics and a potential lineup that Jesse Marshall bring. So we have Melier in goal, no surprises there. Then our back four, I went with Ailing, Lorente, Strack, Strauk, and Furpo as our main back four. And I'm trying to take into consideration injuries at the moment and current squad players available. Then I went with Dallas and Forshaw as the double sixes as Jesse Marsh, Jesse Marsh likes to play with. I picked these two players because they're a little bit more mobile than Robbie Cock, but he could substitute in for a central defender or a holding midfielder. But these two players are versatile enough to play eight roles as well and give them more mobility when pressing and going forward. Then we have Rafinha on the right, Harrison on the left, playing in a bit more narrow in a 4-4-2 or 4-2-2-2 system that Jesse Marsh looks to press in and play high intensity pressing game in. Then in front of them, we have Rodrigo and Daniel James. Now, obviously Bamford and Phillips will make a huge difference and Cooper as a central defender, but for the squad players available right now, I think this will be the starting 11 in a 4-2-2-2. Now the most dominant phase and the phase that Jesse Marsh is most competent in is his pressing phase. And he's a very ball oriented pressing coach, meaning he looks to then establish numerical superiority around the ball carrier and press the ball carrier with a numerical advantage. So as we see in just a 4-3-3, the setup is the first style of pressing. We see Rafinha go wide. Daniel James take away the holding midfielder. Rodrigo cuts off circulation. And then the three midfielders left over will shift to the ball side. So from here, will allow the central defender to drive and progress the ball. But then we'll often use cover shadows to block passes in the wide area. And we even see at the bottom of our screen now Luke Ailing start to jump. Lorente shifts over and we can even see some aspects of man orientation in the back line, which was a heavy, heavy concept in Marcelo Bielsa's side. So some residual tactics from Marcelo Bielsa will help Jesse Marsh greatly when he looks to then form his team. So with, by Luke Ayling jumping, Lorente shifting over, this allows then Luke Ayling to have better coverage of the wide area and potentially jump if Rafinha's cover shadow isn't strong enough to block out the pass to the fullback. But as we see, the heavy use of cover shadows allows the players to have direct access to the ball when pressing. So now we see we have three players around the ball. The central defender is now isolated because of the positional superiority of our pressing players. So by using the cover shadow, it isolates the ball and presses the player into the central part of the field. So when the ball is won, we have numbers around the ball in tight areas, and now we can go directly to goal and potentially just have a very vertical fashion and create many chances from this offensive transition. But now we can look at a central pressing trap around the holding midfielder. So this is often common among ball-oriented pressing teams. So now the first priority is cut the central defender off from circulation. Now Rodrigo gets on the opposite side of the six, making him look free. But now we have a more emphasis 
on, Ra on Rafinha playing in a wider position, completely discouraging the pass into the fullback, forcing play to go in the central three corridors. So from here, the central defender is again allowed to drive forward through the half space. And now we see the player free is the number six on their offensive team. And the players now around the number six have access to this player, meaning by the ball, by the time the ball gets there, that these players around the six will be able to press him. Daniel James back presses the central defender, which forces him into a decision and most likely will be an easy decision to the free or what looks to be a free number six. So when the ball is played, we have adequate numbers around the ball numerical advantage in the central corridors of the field, natural cover shadows blocking a switch of play to the weak side, and Harrison may even come deeper to then further emphasize his cover shadow to block off the weak side. But now, when the pass is played, we have our players press, back press, and jump and press from a player like Forshaw to win the ball in the central corridors and then exploit the offensive shape of the opposing team to then win the ball, go forward and try and score a goal. So this is what we can expect. These type of concepts we can expect from a Jesse Marsh Leeds United team. And I hope they do well. I hope they get the results they need to stay in the Premier League because they are a very exciting squad. And it's been so long since they've been established in the Premier League. So I really like for them to stay. But that's where we're going to wrap up the video. And I hope you guys enjoyed it. I'll see you in the next one.